Today's Take 5 with the Saints, April the 17th, is in some ways part two of the Mohawk tradition because yesterday we had Mary Brandt, who was a Mohawk but also one heavily influenced by dealings with British and Dutch traders and in fact was raised in many ways as a European as far as living in a house and having the ability to read and write and speak in English. Today, however, is one who did not have such luxuries and privileges as that. Today's saint is Kateri Tikakwitha, a young woman who is the first Native American canonized as a saint in the Roman Catholic Church, and we recognize her as well because of her intense devotion to her faith in spite of the opposition she received from her own people a century before Mary Brett, who was accepted both by her own people and Europeans. So today we take a look at the life of Tikakwitha, and the scripture that goes with her feast day today comes out of Matthew chapter 8, verses 18 through 22. Now when Jesus saw great crowds around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. A scribe then approached and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. This is a passage that often troubles many of us contemporary readers of the Bible, thinking that we essentially have to turn our backs on everything in order to be a disciple of Jesus. But it fits, and is a lot easier for us at least to deal with when we understand it in the context of someone like Tikakwitha, whose name is a fascinating and somewhat humorous name. She who bumps into things is the rough English translation of her name. She was born in the Mohawk village of Osernun in upstate New York around the year 1656. And she knew hardship from an early age as her family and her tribe were stricken by a smallpox epidemic, of course, that was brought to them by European settlers that were coming through the area. A number of her people in her family died, including her parents and her younger brother. For her, she did not die, but her face was severely scarred and her vision impaired for the rest of her life as a result of that epidemic. Because of her face and the fact that she was an orphan, according to tradition, her aunt and uncle, who took over as her custodial parents, wanted to marry her, which again was part of the tradition of a lot of native tribes, the Mohawk tribe for sure in this case, wanted her to have an arranged marriage so she could have status within the tribe and be able to have a family through which she could be supported by and also Well, as she got older, to not have someone who would judge her by her appearance. But she resisted these efforts, so that led to the first bout of conflict with her own people. She, after having survived the uh, smallpox epidemic that was likely brought by these missionaries, she listened and was very impressed by the teaching of Jesuit missionaries who came through in that in her area, and she decided to convert to Christianity, which actually her mother also had converted to Christianity, but she was too young to have her mother be much influence to her in that regard. She was baptized on Easter Sunday in the year 1676, just shy of 20 years of age. And as part of her conversion, she took the name Kateri, which was a Mohawk version of the name of Catherine for the St. Catherine of Siena. She devoted her life to chastity, pledging to marry only Jesus Christ, as faithful nuns in that day were called to do. She asked also the Virgin Mary to accept her as a daughter. She was mocked frequently by her own villagers, who essentially just teased her and ridiculed her enough that she fled to a village south of Montreal where, with a friend of hers, she wanted to start a monastic community of indigenous women who were very sympathetic and interested in this life of Christianity. However, the local Jesuit priests dissuaded her from this because, quote, she was not trained and experienced enough to know how to do so. Well, We can look back and sit with uh, 
sarcastic judgment on that decision, but it in fact led her, instead of forming a closed community, to live a life, an ordinary life of chastity and good works among the people, taking care of the elderly and sick, natives and Europeans alike. But once again, though, at a young age, at the age of 24, she succumbed to a serious illness, which we're not sure what it was, but it killed her very rapidly from what the accounts we have. Tradition accords her final words simply as being, Jesus, I love you, as she died on Holy Wednesday of 1680. The legend goes, and of course this is back when legends of things like this still took place, but the legends were so strong that they led to her burial site being a pilgrimage, that the body, that her face took on the appearance of a child, even a smile, meaning all of the marks from the smallpox on her face disappeared. And these legends spread rapidly to the point where her gravesite became a pilgrimage center as early as 1684, or four years after her death. To this day, she is known as the Lily of the Mohawks and of the Mohawk, and as such, she was one who paved the way for the church to make inroads with the Mohawks, for the Mohawks to be very sensitive and open to the idea of Christianity as something at least that was an option for those who wished to convert. And, by the way, as any good Catholic saint has, she is also recognized as the patron, or matron saint in this case, of ecology and the environment as well as persons in exile. A person who indeed did not have a hole to lay in or a place to lay her head as Jesus spoke to those who came up and wanted to follow him, but she indeed was a young woman who, despite the great challenges she faced in her health and in the rejection of her own people in many ways, sought to pursue her faith by taking care of others and remaining devoted to the sacred heart of Jesus for her short but very powerful and influential days of her life influencing others with her great faith. Thanks for joining me. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow for our next Take 5.